Ladies and gentlemen, sit down, grab some snacks, and get ready to have your mind blown because you're watching the ups and downs of Nicolas Cage. Yes, thank you, hello, and welcome to the ups and downs of Nicolas Cage, where every week we take a look at the best and the worst Nicolas Cage has to offer. As always, I'm your host, Logan Mock, here to take you on this journey. And today is a Friday, which means we're looking at one of his lower films. Today, we're looking at Zandali. I know what you're thinking. Wow, I can't believe we're about to listen to Logan talk about the 1980 musical fantasy rom-com Xanadu. I've loved that movie so much. The roller skating, the music, everything about it is incredible. And you're right, but unfortunately, you're wrong. We're not talking about Xanadu. We're talking about 1991's Zandali, directed by Sam Pillsbury and quote-unquote written by Mary Kornhauser because she stole about 90% of the plot from a French play. And it is not a fun, lighthearted musical fantasy rom-com. It's an erotic thriller slash romantic tragedy. Now, if that doesn't spell out a certain success, I don't know what does. The film follows Nicolas Cage, who is an artist, as he has an affair with his friend's wife. Um, and that's really all that happens in the film. It's about ten minutes of footage repeated over and over again. And from this film, I have a question to all the runners, or people who like to run. When you run, do you usually have all of your exposition given to you then because that's what happens in this film the main lady zandali which by the way is a terrible name i don't know why that is the name she was given but every single time an important life event happens to her whether or not she uh falls in love with nicholas cage or meets a prisoner on a dumpster truck it happens while she's running like I get that they have to have an excuse for her to go outside of the house, but she has a job in New Orleans that I feel like could have plenty of interesting stuff happen there instead of having to watch the same shot of her running outside over and over again for something new to happen, and she runs away, and then the scene ends. I will say that... For all of the film's many plots, like a terrible love triangle, uncharismatic relationships, and characters that you really don't care about, Nicolas Cage does do a good job. He plays a convincing, egotistical, um, pompous artist. He says stuff like, In today's age, you can't capture the true emotions of a person without losing some of its essence in art. Which is just a way of saying that his painting sucks, because it does. The paintings that we see are like vomit green and bright blue outlines of a person's face. I'm willing to bet that I could make a similar uh, style painting with just as good quality. But the other stuff I said. There's a love triangle because Zandali is married to a man she doesn't like and she likes Nicolas Cage sometimes. That's not a good love triangle. If you want a good love triangle, why don't you look at the Nicolas Cage film Honeymoon in Vegas? Where I haven't seen it yet, but the poster of it has two grooms and a bride, so I assume there's some sort of love triangle. Or even the Twilight series. A lot of people don't like them, but the love triangle is good enough to have sparked debate over millions of fans worldwide as to who Bella should end up with, Jacob or Edward. In this one, you don't care who anyone ends up with because all the characters are unlikable. You feel satisfied by the ending of the film, which I'll get to later, because of how it deals with those characters. And overall, the film is just bad. There's really no appeal. It seems like someone had an idea for a um, real, not reality, like a telenovela on TV, 
because the music sounds just like what every soap opera sounds like. Like lots of uh, harps and like weird chorus sounds like at random points in the film. But some TV executive said, hey, there's no way you can make a whole TV show out of this. And you said, yeah, you're right. And so Sam Pillsbury made a movie instead. Uh, That's really all I have to say about this film without going to the spoilers. So uh, after ad break, it's time for the spoilers. Interested in making your own podcast, but not sure where to start? Anchor makes it easy. Anchor has creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. And best of all, it's free. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Before I get into the plot line, I need to make a quick um, fix for a mistake I made. Uh, A bit ago, I reviewed Dying of the Light, another bad Nicolas Cage film. And he died in that one, but I forgot to update the Nicolas Cage death count. So as of this film, Nicolas Cage has died in nine of the 18 films I reviewed. And with that out of the way, it's time for the film. So the film starts off in New Orleans. We're introduced to the main character, Zandali, and her husband, um, Terry. But Terry is not spelled T-E-R-R-Y, because why would it be? It's spelled T-H-I-E-R-R-Y. So that alone is an abomination to the English language. Just completely ignoring the fact that there's a woman named Zandali, and no one ever questions why a person in the 20th century would be named Zandali and not a demon from 418 B.C., well, we see right away that they don't have a really good marriage. Um, they, you know, don't talk anymore. They don't connect anymore. It's just a whole sad, wet blanket of a marriage. Until uh, Zandali tries to outrun a train. She fails, and then she sees Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage is an artist who was friends with her husband back when they were younger. Her husband was a poet, we find out, and that's why she uh, married him. And that's why she's attracted to Nicolas Cage, because, you know, everyone loves a poet and an artist alike, because when you think of uh, people who are fun to spend a lot of time with, poets and artists definitely come to mind. They definitely have the most fun personalities and the most uninflated egos. Just kidding. Both of these characters are egotistical, um, narcissists. Uh, They definitely think of themselves as better than others. And they think that they're a lot more charismatic than they actually are, which is never good to watch. Um... That leads to just bad enjoyment of a film. But we find out that uh, Terry is living with his grandmother and his wife. And there, there's really nothing to talk about these characters' backstories. It's so simple. It's There's no real exploration about what could possibly happen with any of these characters. It's very simple. Oh, she's with him. They live with this person. They did this. He used to be this, but now he's this. Terry is a executive at a radio station or newspaper, something along the lines. And his father used to run it, but then he died and left it to 
Terry. So now he's in charge of it all. And that's what led to Zandalese being like, oh, I don't love you as much anymore. Nicholas Cage is working for Terry now because of something. I guess his art career isn't taking off. Shocker. And there's a scene where Zandali, Nicolas Cage, and Tevi are all in a room together with uh, Terry's grandmother. And this starts an unfortunate trend where it seems like every single line was written by a different person who was just given the line before and no direction where the scene would end up. Because it starts off like a normal conversation, and you'd expect there to be some natural conclusion. But they just keep talking and talking about random stuff and like, oh, I hate, I don't know, I hate gumbo. Oh, life is so sad. And they talk about random stuff, and then the scene just ends because Nicolas Cage looks at Zandali funny, and she gets out of the room. Like it, the the script feels like a twenty different paper shredded scripts that Mary Kornhauser just randomly taped together and tried to make sentences out of it. And then the film starts a whole lot of nothing. This is where they repeat the scenes. Zandley goes out for a jog. They. Meet Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage and Zandali make out for a while. And a whole lot of boring stuff. Steve Buscemi is in this. He plays a prisoner who's on a dump truck. And then he steals a radio. And then disappears. His character uh, does not need to exist. He doesn't add anything. You can have characters added to a film that don't push the plot forward, but it's generally a good idea to make sure that the characters um, are good and that the film doesn't come to a grinding halt the second they set foot on screen. Generally, you don't have to. These people obviously didn't go with that rule. Um, They wanted to divert expectations and then we see the true side of Zandali. It's not a really important moment in the film. Nicolas Cage was going to meet her so they could make this so they could do a little dance, make a little love, and get down tonight. But he was called back to work by Terry because he's skipping work a lot. And this is the true character of Zandali. She's throwing paint everywhere. She's a petulant, tantrum-throwing child. The fact that two, let alone one man, could ever find her to be worthwhile of a relationship is shocking. She drains the energy whenever she sets foot on screen because she is flip-flopping back and forth in her ideals so much. She slaps Nicolas Cage saying, you can't do that. I'm married. And then five seconds later, she and him are making out. And then she says, my husband, you are so lame. And then she is crying because he doesn't like her as much. Or when she cheats on him with Nicolas Cage and she says, we need to talk. And she's acting upset at him for not talking to her more when she's cheating on him. She is so unlikable to watch. And when you have an egotistical artist, a boring, uncharismatic radio executive, and a tantrum-throwing woman child, all in a love triangle, you lose interest in the film so quickly. And that's what happens in this film. You don't care about what happens to any of the characters. 